Thanks for checking out my video this week. Uh, I thought I would take you through a little tour of my collection of basses. Um, I've usually only ever had one or maybe two basses simultaneously and then I would trade them in or sell them to get different basses if I wanted something different. This is like the first time in my life where I've had more than two basses. It'll be interesting to go through some of some of them or all of them basically and kind of explain where they come from and why I still have a collection of bases. Um, they are there are five in my collection right now and they range from your basic starter squire uh, P bass to a, a squire jazz bass a little bit nicer to a couple of Ibanez boutique style basses that are a little older and of course the the five string fury that uh, started it all um, I think it's kind of interesting that I have this collection of basses there's still a couple of basses that I'd like to look at in the future but right now I have these five and they all serve a purpose so let's get into that right now and take a look at the five basses because it's all about that bass let's take a look Okay, so this is probably the cheapest based on my list. I got it off of Facebook Marketplace for pretty much nothing. It had a custom leather pick guard that I didn't end up liking after a while. Lucky for me, precision and jazz bass parts are widely available. I got a nice set of tortoiseshell colored pick guards from Amazon and learned how to put it on the bass. I wanted a P bass just so I could understand the sonic difference it would make in recording. I heard that a lot of people tend to record with P basses, so I thought I'd give it a try. This is the Affinity P bass that you would get in a starter kit that would come with an amp and a gig bag and, and things like that. Uh, so it's not much to write home about. Basically, I wanted to know if I would like a P bass sound before I made a major investment. Um, it mostly just sits at home next to the digital piano so that if I ever get the urge to slap the bass and I'm too lazy to go two rooms over, I can just grab it and play. When I was in high school, I wanted a bass guitar and was told that I should investigate the jazz bass. I never did until now. We've got a Squire classic vibe 70s jazz bass with a maple fingerboard in natural. Uh, this was not an impulse buy at all. I had, up to this point, played a lot of active five-string basses, and I wanted to try jazz bass. So I bought one. At first, I didn't really like the sound of this, of this bass at the store. I ended up seeing three at a guitar center that was outside of my normal traveling pattern. I played all three for about ten minutes each, and the one I bought sounded different somehow. Um, there's an imperfection in the wood that I think maybe adds a little flavor. I loved the way it played and when I was in the store, but the inspector decided to fix it, quote unquote, before I was leaving. I hated it when I got home. I managed to get it back to the way I like it, and now it's fun to play. I put some flat wounds on it, and it's got a really metal sound, mellow sound that I really like. I'm considering adding a sponge or a bridge mute to get a really classic sound, uh, to be determined on that. Okay, right now we get to more of our boutique bases. This is an Ibanez BTB33 with a natural finish. It's one of those B2B base workshops. Um, this was a 2015 model. It's a natural flat. It's a five string bass, but it's tuned E, A, D, G, C. Um, it has a mahogany body, ash top, and a five piece maple, maple boobing your neck, and humbunky pickups. In between, you'll notice a little ramp there that, that was kind of interesting to play with. Uh, it's a three band EQ, and there is a, a, a toggle switch that kind of gives you a swoop in the mid range. Three different settings there. Um, the bass is my favorite for working on chords and playing in the upper register. I don't really play out much with it because it seems like it's more suited for solo bass work, and most of the time when I'm out, I'm there to be the bassist, not a soloist. Uh, if I get good enough of my looper, maybe I'll take it on the road, never stop learning.
This is my Ibanez B2B 685SC Terra Firma with the Bartoloni pickups. Uh, this bass has a, a wider spacing than most of the five strings I've played. It, it really feels solid in hand. I like that it has a longer scale. I like that it has a good sustain on it. I put the, the, the DR Black Beauties on it to kind of give this dry tone that I, I really kind of like. Um, with the, active, with the active EQ, I can pretty much get the sounds I want from it. Uh, this one goes with me to most of my gigs because I can just pick it up and play it without thinking about it. Great for those times I don't know the song and I really need to fake it till I make it. Um, this one was a purchase from uh, Firehouse Guitars that was going out of business, so I got a really good deal on it. Um, this is probably one of those, those favorite ones. I'll keep this one around. Last but not least, we've got the PV Fury 5-string. This is where the 5-string Fury comes from. I can't even tell you how long I've had this bass. Years ago, I got it from Rit Music. Um, it was used, and I picked it up, and it just felt great. Um, another cool feature about it is I actually have a molded case that's built for PVs. I had a PV milestone at the time, uh, a five string milestone, and I really didn't like it. Um, but I had it in this, this custom case that I got separately. Well, this PV fit the case and it played well and that was my main bass for years. That was the one that I played. When I was playing with Edge from Fallen, I would actually tune it um, C, E, A, D, and G. So instead of that low B, we had the low C. A lot of the Edge From Falling songs are muscle memory at this point, so I can't actually play a lot of them with a normally tuned five string. I have to, to tune that B to a C in order to keep the same patterns. A lot of high energy music, a lot of running around on stage, and so you don't really want to be thinking about where your fingers are going. You just want to be able to play from memory. Um, this is the, the, the bass that kind of gave me my name, the Five String Fury, Unleash the Fury. All right, thanks for checking out this video. Thanks for following me on this journey down memory lane as we talk about the, the five basses I currently have in my collection. Um, I'll keep you updated if I get any new ones, if I finally do pick up that Marcus Miller Sire bass or not. Um, in the meantime, in March, we've got a new album coming out. Um, I'm going to throw up a, a, an album cover for that. Uh, look for that on all the streaming services. I'll do a big announcement. We'll do a premiere. It'll be awesome. Thanks for watching.